And what a display this is. It really brings a touch of class to Newton Cashel. Now this is what I call street art. These bog oak sculptures are the work of Michael and Kevin Casey. They're something else. Michael and Kevin's work is on display here too. This is the Corley Trackway Centre. It houses an ancient 18 metre section of Bog Oak Road that was part of a road system across the Longford Bogs dating back to the year 148 BC. In its day, this was an impressive feat of engineering. Michael and Kevin Casey's workshop is down at Barley Harbour, just outside Newton Cashel on the shores of Loch Ree. This is where they prepare their bog oak before they start to carve. The preparation of the centuries old wood is long, laborious and painstaking. Michael's staying at the work while young Kevin shows me where they get their bog oak from. The wood itself, we got it carbon dated in uh, Queen's University in Belfast. The bog oak has been carbon dated 5,600 years old and the bog yew at 4,200 years old. Now, just give or take a few, right. few hundred years here or there. What I'm looking for is, like that first piece I picked up, it's just a straight piece of wood. There's no, nothing interesting in it. There's nothing really you can do much with that. This one is more interesting. It's got, this was, would have originally been the root part of the tree. So you get much more interesting shapes. Um, this piece here now would be a lot more interesting than um, the other one here. There's a shape in it already, you can see. Um, maybe a figure. Oh, let me stand it up here. You can see maybe a head in it there or an arm coming out. So this all, all this wood here, all this has to be cleaned off to bring up the real, the real color of the wood. The bog water, the bog acid, changes the colour, the oak is naturally brown in colour and has changed the wood into this black. So you can't really see it here at the moment, when it's cleaned down it's a lovely deep black colour. So you just collect it from out here and then... We yeah, exactly, we collect it from here, we'll come in, the road is here beside us and uh, a digger will load it up and we'll bring it home, we'll store it, uh, then it's dried for maybe naturally, depending on if it's freshly out of the bog it's very wet, if it's been here for a while it has dried a little bit we can dry it maybe two to three years, just natural air drying. This is my, I'm, going to, I'm doing a group with them. There's going to be about oh. six of them. This is E.T. here. Right. And this is another one. I think he's hiding his face. You can see him there. Uh -huh. And this is the third one. I have smaller ones. There's a whole family of them, you know, hoping. What are you going to do with these? And, uh, well, I, I love them and I wouldn't, I'll bring them over to my studio. when I've, They'll be going on a big stand. Right. And we'll stand them in the corner. Did you just find them locally, yeah? Yeah, they all came out of the bogs, but uh, now you wouldn't have seen that with all the dirt and peat on it, you know, but... Um, what have you done to them? Have you... I've cleaned it down and we've wire brushed it with a drill, you know, cleaning all yeah. the dirt. So it's down to the black and now the polishing and sanding starts, you know. So we work in two ways. I follow the inspiration in nature mm. and then the other way I draw and do models of the pieces for commission. Mm. That you have to. So, Michael, these are the finished pieces. Yeah. Uh, what do you do with them now once they're finished? Where, do they, where would they go to? Um, some of the smaller ones will be that you see around. Will people come here? Uh -huh. We sell them. And other pieces I will do for exhibitions. And then this is my permanent collection here, which I like to keep the bigger ones. You know. but the work is very slow, which we do. By the time you dig it out of the bog and dry it for four or five years and that, so it's not a production line. I'll show you the most difficult one of the lot I found here. Um, this was uh, just to be used at a ceremony in Rome. Uh, it's not a very good photograph now, but you catch it for the beatification of Edmund Rice. Ah, oh, the Christian Brothers, man. Yes, yeah. 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 And. I got the commission about March or April, I think, you know, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't find it. And just going on, and they were ringing April, May, June, mm -hmm. and July, and it had to be October. And then one evening, I was in the garden, and there was a huge root, a huge root like that, you know. And in the centre of it, I saw the. Now that's not an. That looks like an African face, but it's a hand holding the chalice. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, so I ran and got my chainsaw and cut it out. I was very nervous about it because the time was catching on, but I couldn't get the inspiration. There's no way to work. And you were keeping the Pope waiting? The Pope was waiting, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's not many people in Utah actually get to say yeah. that. <laughs>